Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Data Analysis with Dr. Veronica. In this video, we will look at the Microsoft Excel FV and NPV functions. FV meaning future value and NPV meaning net present value. So before we go into the functions proper, there are certain things that we need to understand, which is very important to work with the FV and the NPV functions. The first is the time value of money. So if you save 5,000 Naira in the bank monthly after five years, will you get 300,000 Naira, which is 5,000 times 12, 12 months times five years, or will you get a different amount? The second scenario is if you are owed 800,000 Naira in 2023 and the debtor offers to pay you the same sum of 800,000 Naira in three years' time, say in 2026, will you accept? Why? What is going to inform your decision to accept or not to accept? Basically, what is going to inform your decision is the time value of money. Money changes value over time. And because of this, a thousand Naira earned in January 2023 is not the same value as 1000 Naira earned in January 2024. And by the way, Naira is the domestic currency used in Nigeria. So why is this situation happening? Why does money change value over time? We have some factors that is responsible for this. One of them is the inflation rate and inflation is an increase in the general price level. The next factor is the risk. So in the second example that we look through, which is somebody owing you 800,000 Naira in 2023 and offering to pay you in three years time, there is a risk factor. And the risk is what if the person is not even able to raise that amount of money in 2026 because things got really bad with the person. So there is a risk factor that of course comes with uncertainty. The next factor or reason is the opportunity costs. Opportunity costs are things that you had to forego for the decision that you take now. So let us imagine that the debtor pays you your 800,000 Naira now, you could decide to get a beautiful piece of furniture with it, or you can get, say, a television set with the money. But the fact that the debtor offers to pay you in three years' time means you have to forego the, beauty, the beautiful furniture set or the television screen. So the, the furniture that you did not buy and the television that you did not buy is the opportunity cost. These three factors combine to make money to change value over time. So let us look at the FV function. FV, like I said before, means future value. The FV function calculates the future value of an investment based on a constant interest rate. We can use it for periodic or constant payments or a single lump sum. So this is a scenario that we have in front of us. My neighbor just got a new job that is paying her 500,000 Naira monthly. She's 30 years old currently, and she wants to save a portion of her salary, say 100,000 Naira monthly, for 10 years in a saving scheme. So she goes to an asset management company to make inquiries and she is told that the savings package that she chose after giving her a lot of options, she finally settled for a savings package that has an interest rate of 5% per annum. How much will she get from the investment after 10 years? Bear in mind that my neighbor also has the option to save this portion of her salary in a piggy bank in her house. Every month, she can just take 100,000 Naira from her salary and dip into her piggy bank. But she decides to invest this by going to an asset management company to make inquiries because she wants to earn extra interest on that money. So the question is, how much will she get from the investment after 10 years? Let us see how we can use the FV function 
to determine this. So everything that we saw on the slide is right here. My neighbor will make a monthly payment of 100,000 Naira to, be, to the savings scheme. Monthly payment is 100,000 Naira. And the 100,000 Naira is in negative because it is an outflow. So this is going to reduce her resources. This is why it is 100,000 Naira in negative. The interest rate that she was offered is 5%. So I will change this to 5%. The number of payments that she would do for 10 years is monthly. So a year contains 12 months multiplied by 10 years. So she would make a total number of 120 payments before the end of the package that she has chosen. And we have another line here that says annuity type. But this one we will see what this means when we start using the function. Let us see what the FV function says. Put the equal to sign, type FV, open the bracket. The first argument is the rate. The rate is the interest rate that will be paid on this investment. So here we just select the interest rate like this. And now we know that the interest rate is charged per annum which is for one year. And the payments my, my neighbor will make, she's making monthly payments. So we need to divide the annual interest rate by 12 to be very representative of what we're doing, and then we can get accurate figures. The next argument after the comma separator is n pair, which means the number of payments. My neighbor will make 120 payments. I put the comma separator and the next argument is PMT. PMT is how much is the investment going to be? So we now know that she will make a monthly investment. How much will it be monthly? So I select this amount. I put the comma separator. The next argument is PV. And we can see that this argument is optional. This argument is optional only when you have no information supplied for the PMT argument. So if you have nothing for PMT, then you have to provide the, the PV, which means present value. But if you have the PMT argument supplied, then the PV is optional. So I will put another comma because we do not have the P. This takes me to the next argument, which is type. Zero and one are the two options that we have for the type. Zero is the end of the period. One means the beginning of the period. So the type basically tells you how you want to time the payments. Are the payments going to be made at the end of the period or at the beginning of the period? If you do not supply any information for this argument, by default, it would take a zero. But in this case, let us assume that the payment will be made at the beginning of the period. So I will select one, which is already here, and I will close the bracket. This is the value that I have. And of course, the sign, the dollar sign that we see here comes up by default. So I can change this to any currency that I choose. For the purpose of consistency, let us go back to choosing NGN right here. So this is the future value of the monthly investments my neighbor will make. This means at the end of her investment, this is what will be paid to my neighbor. Down here, we can see if she decides to, to make her payments by herself into her piggy bank, say every month she puts in 100,000 very diligently into her piggy bank, of course, there's not going to be any interest and we can calculate how much she will save if she decides to save this at home by herself. So it will be 100,000 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 10. This is the amount my neighbor will have if she decided to save this amount by herself at home. What we know about the time value of money. In 10 years, of course, this money will be worth less than what it is worth currently. And let us say my friend or my neighbor is very inquisitive and she goes to another asset management company just to see if she will get a better interest rate. And she goes to another asset management company and she gets an interest rate offer of 6%. Let us see how this would turn out to be. FV, open the bracket. The rate now is 6%. So I'll do 0 0.06 divide by 12. Put the comma separator number of payments. Is this, this is the payment. 
The PV argument, I will skip this, and then the type will be this. I close the bracket and I press enter. This is how much my, my friend or my neighbor will have if she eventually finds another asset management company that will offer her 6% interest rate instead of 5%. The future value of her investment will be higher. So we know that getting a higher interest rate will be more profitable, especially when you're making an investment. So that is for my neighbor who is making an investment. In this example, which we will use to see the NPV function, which is the net present value. We have this example. We, we want to expand our factory and we are thinking of buying a new machine that costs 1 million naira. Now, in this example, we do not have equity funds to buy the machine, but we have an option to take a loan from a financial institution at 8% per annum interest rate. The machine will have a useful life of five years only, and the annual revenue or the cash flows from the machine will be 300,000 Naira annually. So every year that we use this new machine, we'll have cash flow of 300,000 Naira. What is the net present value of this investment? Basically, this question is saying, is this investment worth it? If we go to the bank or a financial institution to take this loan for 8% per annum interest rate, and looking at the cash flows we will have, are we going to meet up with paying the interest rate and have some profit? at the end of the day. Let us see how this will work. So basically I have written here that we need to calculate today's value of the future revenues to see if the investment is worth it. 300,000 Naira of cash flows or inflows every month. And here we have 8%. So we have this table. This is the cost of the investment. This is the interest rate given to us by the financial institution. These are the years. After five years, the machine will be out of use. So we will have the inflows of 300,000 Naira annually. Going back to the concept of the time value of money, the present value of 300,000 Naira that we will get in a year's time will not be the same as 300,000 Naira. So looking at the concept of time value of money, we can also see how much is 300,000 Naira in one year's time worth now. And to do this, we use the PV function. We can do a PV calculation, which is basically the current flow or the cash flow divided by one plus the rate, the interest rate that is offered on that investment or on, I will fix this, close the bracket, raised to the power of the year. Because as we move ahead into the future, the present value of the cash flows reduces. We will see that in this example right now. So just change this. In one year's time, we will get 300,000 Naira. But that 300,000 Naira in what in one year's time is presently worth 277,777 Naira 78 Kobe. Let us drag this to see what happens for other years. You can see that in year two, the present value of the inflow reduces further. The same for year three, for year four, and for year five. The present value of 300,000 Naira we will receive in five years is 204,174.96. And this is as a result of the time value of money concept. And this, of course, is discounted. Discounted means the time value of money has been affected on the inflows expected or the cash flows expected in the future. While these inflows are not discounted, the time value of money concept has not been affected on these future inflows. But for the discounted inflows, the time value of money factor has been put in. So we can sum everything to see what the total will be. This is the present value of the inflows we will get for five years. Instead of going through this method of calculating the present value for each of the years, we can use the NPV function to calculate this at once.
notes and let us see how to do this. You put the e-call to sign, type NPV, open the bracket, select the rate, which is 8%, put the comma separator, and you select the value of the cash flows, is what I am doing right now. And mind you, you're selecting, you are selecting the inflows that is undiscounted. You're not selecting the discounted inflow. Take note of this. So basically, the net present value of these inflows is this. And if we can just make another example here. Let us see how much all the inflows will be from year one to year five. Undiscounted. We will get 1.5 million naira or 1 million 500,000 naira. This is the total sum of the undiscounted cash flows. But the net present value of this cash flow is 1 million 197, 813 naira and one cup. And to see if we have a positive NPV or a negative NPV, PV. I will just deduct the NPV value from the cost of the investment to see if this investment is worth it or not worth. I have done the computation and now we can see that the NPV value is positive. So this means if we calculate all the future inflows and discount it now, we will get a positive NPV. We will make a profit at the end of the day, considering what the interest rate is. Now let us assume that we went to the financial institution and we are offered a higher interest rate. Say, 19% interest rate instead of the 8% interest rate that was used in the simulation. The question is, will the NPV be positive or negative? Will it be a worthwhile investment to take this loan and get this machine for this purpose? So all we need to do is to change the rate here. And I press enter on my keyboard and I can see that the net present value is negative. And here we also see that the discounted present value of all the inflows is is lower than the cost of the investment. So in summary, this investment at 19% is not profitable. Whenever you're working with the NPV, the results can inform your decision making as follows. After your computation, if your net present value is greater than zero, this means that you can proceed with the investment under the existing conditions. In the first example, our interest rate was 8%. And under this condition of 8%, and looking at the inflows of 300,000 Naira annually, the NPV was greater than zero. So of course, we would proceed, we should proceed with the investment with these conditions. But after your computation, and you see that the NPV is less than zero, the decision criteria will be not to proceed with the investment. Because the present value of the discounted cash flows is less than the cost of the investment. So it is not profitable to proceed with the investment under those conditions. You can only proceed if some of the conditions for the investment changes, one of which is the interest rate. In this video, we have been able to look at the future value function, the NPV function, which are important financial functions in Microsoft Excel. The practice file to this video is in the description box. Please open the description box and click on the link to download the practice file because the best way to learn Microsoft Excel is to practice as you watch. Thank you for stopping by if you are a returning subscriber and if you are a new visitor to my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Let me know also in the comment section if you have used the FV and the NPV functions and what you think about these amazing functions. See you in another video.